Uh, the same thing with SOHCAHTOA, but this is a little bit different because instead of finding the trig ratio, like where you're uh, said like sine of W and you had to find the ratio, in this case, it might ask you to find the actual side length using that ratio, okay? So let's try to find PR. How would you describe the side length PR in this triangle? What did, what did you say? Okay. One of our three words we've been using uh, for the side lengths. No, so it's either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. And which one is it? The hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Now, normally what I would say is I would recommend using Pythagorean theorem. But you can only use Pythagorean theorem if you know two out of three of the side lengths. Do I know two out of three of these side lengths? I do not. I only know this side length. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a trig ratio to find that side length for the hypotenuse. Okay? So if I'm solving for the hypotenuse, right, think back to your so katoa. <coughs> Which of these do I, am I going to cross out because I'm not going to use it because it doesn't have hypotenuse in it? Do you hear what Emmanuel said? Yes, because there's no H here. So that means I'm going to choose between sine or cosine. Okay. Now, this comes down to the other pieces of information they give you. They're giving us angle R. See how they gave us angle R is 70 degrees? How would you describe this side that they gave us the square root of 11 if I'm looking at it from the perspective of angle R. So it's either the adjacent side or the opposite side. It's the adjacent side. Let's do it again, here you go. Here's angle R. If I was looking for the opposite side, I would go across the triangle. So here would be the opposite side length. But from angle R, RQ is the adjacent side. So which of these, so, or ka am I going to use to solve this problem if I have the adjacent side and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse? The ka. Not ka ka, just ka. So the cosine of angle R is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to write the cosine of 70 degrees equals the square root of 11 over the hypotenuse. And again, I'm solving for the hypotenuse. Now, if you were in Ms. Burns' class, all right, I'm going to do the way that she taught it. What she taught was to put cosine of 70 degrees over 1. Because if you do that, what does this create? Good. So there's a fraction on each side. What do we call that if there's a fraction on each side? What is it? A proportion. What up? Did you have Ms. Burns? Oh, she's going to be so happy. All right. <laughs> that turnaround was amazing. I wish I had video of that turnaround. It was so good. Yes, this is a proportion. And before Miriam says it, before Miriam says it, how should we solve a proportion? No, you're thinking, I'm thinking of something. I don't want you. Ah, I was like, she's not going to say it. She is. We're going to multiply cross products. I don't think Ajoma saw that. I think you just missed this step. Do you want to come back to it? Okay. So Gabriel said proportion. That was my bad. I should not have asked him who he had for a geometry. So that's on me. But we solved this by multiplying diagonally. Not that. It's called multiplying diagonally to get cross products. So I multiplied cosine of 70 degrees times the hypotenuse. I'm solving for the hypotenuse. Is equal to 1 times the square root of 11. Okay? So now if I want to solve for the hypotenuse, what am I going to move to the other side? The cosine of 70 degrees. Now, these calculators are really good, but you need to make sure that you're in degree mode. So if you turn your calculator on, make sure at the top 
it says D E G and mine doesn't mine says rad for radians. So I need to go to mode and go to degree. So it should say D E G at the top. Does it say D E G at the top? What's the difference for rad? D E G radians is a, um, it's just a different unit. It's the same idea um, around the circle, but instead of like 360 degrees is a full rotation. Um, for radians, it's two pi radians. So it's just a lot of more pi involved. Gradient measure? I don't, I don't use that. I've never used it. Okay, ready? So hit N over D. And then do you see how it says the square root of 11 times 1? What is the square root of 11 times 1? Just the square root of 11. So put that in the numerator. And then put cosine of 70. And if you're in degrees, it should give you the answer. My answer is... 9.697. Let's see what it says it wants. It doesn't say anything, so I'm going to round to the nearest tenth for 9.7. And so that is a lot, right? I'm not going to you know, lie to you guys. That, that is a lot of work. I first had to figure out which one I'm going to do. Then I had to set it up, make a proportion, and still do more algebra. So there's a lot of work going on with these questions. It is. Um, I don't know. I just worked really hard in high school. So, like, do you remember all this, like, from high school? Well, most of it from high school? Well, if I don't remember something, I just, like, read up on it and then try practice problems until I get it again. Because I do, I do think that if you work hard enough and try, you can understand anything. Did you ever think you learned, like, in high school, like, you did a picture and, like, you're taking it, like, Oh, you think I don't see that all the time? I do. Whenever I go observe teachers, I'm always like, I won't name names. All right. We all know. Wow. Yeah, especially when I observe the teacher that used to be in that room. I was just joking. It was Miss Bird. Yeah, I'm just joking. I, he's not in my department. And also, I'm recording, so it's not. Yeah. Nice. You can go. Yeah, you got time. All right, let's find side length HJ. So here's side length HJ. All right, and they're giving me angle I, right? You can see angle I. So how would you describe this side length of nine? Remember, it's either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Those are your three options from angle's eye's perspective. We gotta be able to do this. So we can't do this, we can't do this problem. It is adjacent. If you're having trouble with it, put the hypotenuse down first. Which one is the hypotenuse? It is, right? Because it's across from the right angle. So this is the hypotenuse. So always label that first. And then from label I, what I like to do when I did in high school was I'd go with from my angle and I would go across the triangle. So this right here is the opposite. So maybe like the adjacent is the toughest one. So do that last. Okay. So in terms of what they gave me from angle I's perspective, I was given the adjacent side and I'm trying to solve for the opposite side. So let me write down my acronyms here. So yes, go ahead. It will, in this case, they're giving me the angle measure for angle I, so I'm always looking at it from angle I's perspective. If they had given me angle H's perspective, or this angle, I would have looked from there. Um, but what other students might realize, Gladys, is that if you have this angle, this is 90 degrees. You can actually find this by adding these together and subtracting from 180. So there's so many ways to solve this. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so here we go. So which ones am I crossing out? And which one am I going to use between so, ka, and toa? Remember, I'm solving for the opposite, and I'm given the adjacent. That's not one of them. It's either so, ka, or toa. So, so I'm crossing out that one? Why am I crossing that one out? I don't have what? I don't have the opposite side, and I don't have the hypotenuse, so I can't use that one. 
I can cross out Ka as well because I have the adjacent, but am I solving for this one? No, it asked me for HJ, which is here. If this had said solve for HI, then I would be using the cosine. Okay, so it leaves me with Toa. Would be more specific. You talking about side lengths? Yeah. What is the uh, hypotenuse? Well, so this is remember this is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, okay. So yeah. I didn't choose this. There you go. Yeah. And then I was opposite over exactly. So you already know. Make me write all this work, but you already know it. Okay. So tangent of angle I equals opposite over adjacent. So tangent of 24 degrees, sorry, John, equals the opposite over nine. Now, if you wanted to, I know I haven't done this yet on these problems, but if you wanted to, you could replace where I put OPP for the opposite. You could replace this with the side length HJ. Those are the same thing. So it's up to you when you're doing your work I don't know. Okay. Now on this one, I don't think Ms. Byrne would have taught you to make it into a proportion, right? Because if you look, where is our unknown? In the numerator. So how would I just get this by itself? Right, I'd move over the nine with multiplication. So I'm not gonna make it a proportion. All I'm gonna do is multiply both sides by nine. So if I type nine times the tangent of 24 degrees in the calculator, that would give me the side length that I want. Make sure it says DEG in your calculator for degrees. And I got 4.007. You know, let's get that. You got that manual? Nice. So HJ is 4.0, I'm gonna say 4.01. And it should tell you what to round to on the question. No, no. no Gladys? 